Whether you use the Atari or the Steam SSE emulator for the Atari ST, uh, you may be used to using boot managers to configure your system as it's booting up and where it renames files, figures out things, and, and boots up into whatever configuration you want. Now, being the purest that I was, I wanted this to set up just like my old Atari hardware was back in the 80s. You have one large C drive, and have all these different programs, and let the emulator select which ones they want to use and what configuration, so that it worked just like my hardware did. Both of these boot managers work by renaming certain system files. In your root directory, it could be your ACC. Or if you uh, store them in an ACC directory, uh, renames them there. Changes them from ACC to ACX. PRGs in the auto file go to PRX. Uh, control panel go from CPX to CPZs. There is one limitation. You can see it here in the root directory where it has a bunch of different INF files for different configurations. So here I am. I'm in my systems. I'm going to go ahead and change the desktop for the one I'm in into ST to low to medium. It's going to write it out to the new desk INF, not to the medium games one that I booted to. I'm going to have to copy that and rename it over and copy over the medium games one manually. So you might forget to do that. So I decided there had to be a better way and I thought about it and thought about it and it finally struck me. Why couldn't I have separate drives? It would be a lot like the hardware owners who have different adapters to allow them to run different USB drives. So instead of having this ultra complex mishmash of programs all in one directory, I decided I could just clone the C drive, make copies, and trim them to whatever they need. For example, if I take the C drive and I make a bare directory which only has the files I need to boot, and then I would make other copies. For example, anything that needed GDOS, I would add the GEMSYS files to that uh, hard drive. And then uh, on top of that, uh, games. And then I decided, well, you know, games some low, some high, so I changed that to a low directory. Of course, then I had to have a C drive for uh, medium games and its own configuration. Did I stop there? No, I needed to have an apps directory for actual uh, apps. Uh, and then I needed a app high directory uh, for the ones that run in high resolution. Then for each and every one of these directories, I would remove programs that didn't fit the category and add in the files like a GEMSYS folder and the applications that were going to reside there. And then I decided I need one for paint programs, so I added in a graphics directory, and there's all different uh, graphics programs that I use. So that's all great in theory, but let's see how it works. Uh, so I'm going to bring up my uh, Steam emulator here and take a look here. I'm, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the uh, GemDOS file and bring it up. And I'm in Games Medium. So let's go take a look at the directory uh, through the File Explorer in Windows. And uh, let's go to Games Medium and look here. And here's what it's going to be. It's just a simple installation uh, with some ga game folder with certain games in it. Now, there's more here than just the medium games. I haven't cleaned it up yet. But you can just have only the games you need. And there's the new desk INF file, which is going to tell it how to boot. So, let's try it. And here, once it boots, uh, you'll see the medium resolution come up. And it'll be have the games that I saved to the desktop. Speaking of saving the desktop, okay, I put these icons up there, but let's say I want to change something, um, put something else on the desktop, or or wait. Uh, instead of doing that, I'll just move the trash can over here to show this desktop's been saved. So now I want to save this configuration. I just go to Options, Save Desktop. So I click on OK, and I go over here, and let's go check the drive out, the uh, File Explorer again. And let's go take a look at the desktop.inf. If you look here, you'll see that it's got a date of today's date. How do I know that? Well, I just look at the INF file itself and come down here and you see it's got 11.16. If you go way down in the corner of the window, you'll see that's 11.16 on my system. So that's the INF file. No renaming the medium games INF, nothing. Just using it as is. So that was medium games. Let's try low games. And go over here, come up here to the... Uh, drive selector, and I drop down here, 
I find low games there. Uh, and I'm going to click on OK. And then I click on OK again. And then we uh, reboot the Atari. Well, we reboot the emulator. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, reboot. But before we do that, let's go take a look at the uh, files. For Now, that was the medium. So I'm going to go over here to low. And there's a different new desk, INF, uh, different files in here. Uh, but it's going to be booting from that directory now. And sure enough, once it boots, we're going to see that we're not in medium resolution anymore. It's reading off that other INF file, which is telling uh, the system to boot in low resolution. And here's the desktop I've designed for my low resolution games. No changes, no nothing different. I just booted from a different drive. One last boot, and because of this, I have to select a monochrome up there in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to boot into high resolution. So I change it to monochrome, and I come over here to the drive selector, and I browse for apps high. So there's my apps high directory, which has all the programs I want uh, on it. Uh, not only the programs, but some of the files that I use with those programs. So you see here we're booting, and it's in high resolution. And sure enough, after... Uh, the, oh, it's loading GDOS because most of the high programs that I use require GDOS. So it takes a little bit longer to load. Uh, then you'll see uh, the GDOS prompts. And there it is. And boom, comes up. And there's my uh, desktop with all the programs I've installed that are going to be using them under high resolution. And we'll go ahead and run one just to see how it works. Uh, easy draw comes up. There's G plus being activated. Sure enough, everything's fine. I'll go over here and I'll load the screen. Uh, and I have some old pictures I did years ago in the 80s. Uh, the SR-71, I was in that program for seven and a half years when I was in the military. And I did this drawing, of course. Uh, so you go look over here. Everything's working perfectly. Uh, I can zoom. I can do all the functions of easy draw uh, just fine. So uh, after that, I'm done with that. I can just quit. And I go right back to the... Uh, desktop that I was using in high resolution. And from there, I can just continue this process, keep selecting uh, different uh, GEMDOS drives for different configurations, change it to color or monochrome if necessary, and just go do something different. Uh, no different bootloaders or anything. Uh, just changing the directories works perfectly. Now, for all the Hatari users, uh, it uses the same drive structures. You go ahead and boot up, and now it is in medium resolution there. If I want to change, I need to press the F12 key to bring up the menu, and I simply click on the hard drives here. I go down to GemDOS, and I browse around uh, using the up uh, buttons up top, go up there, find the next one I want to use, and click on it. And once I've selected that, I uh, simply go back, and then I go ahead and say reboot uh, system and I say OK and sure enough it'll come up in the low resolution uh, for the games. And let's not forget for high resolution we go again hit the F12 key to go to the Atari menu and we select a different uh, uh, GEMDOS drive. Go here, go up and then we find the apps high and we go there and we return to the menu but now we need to go to the uh, monitor menu or the uh, Atari monitor. So there it is. We select the high resolution. We reboot. And sure enough, it reads off that directory, which loads up the high resolution files uh, for Atari. Now, every time I created a new directory based on the original uh, C drive, uh, it chewed up more disk space. Uh, but if we look here, here's all the different uh, stuff I had there. Quite a bit of stuff. But you have to remember, quite a bit of stuff in the Atari days is nowhere near it was here. But even with that, even with this directory having 200 and some odd megabytes, megabytes now, not gig, uh, it doesn't consume that much space. But then once I sat there and did that for the other drives, for example, if I go here to the bare drive, it's a lousy 15 megabytes. So even during this transition, it wasn't chewing up a lot of my hard drive space. As a matter of fact, if I highlight all these here uh, and, ask, and I ask for the uh, drive size, 
uh, of all these directories, it's a, <laughs> it's a half a gig, a half a gig. Uh, so no concerns for uh, dry space. So there you have it. Make as many copies as you need, the categories you need. Strip them down, configure them to be very clean. And then all you have to do is change the gem DOS drive directory in your emulator, and you're good to go. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want more, you can just click on subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook or Twitter. The links are in the description of the video.